Hi. So during the last week, PG&E came out and installed a smart meter on our house and went through the neighborhood and installed smart meters on all those. So I thought I would do an experiment here to kind of show what those smart meters look like in the RF spectrum. So what we're looking at here on the spectrum analyzer is 900 megahertz to 930 megahertz. And the PG&E meters in California use the ISM band, which is 902 to 928. And you can see that uh, these fast pulses are jumping across occasionally. And what I've done is, is I've, the green trace here is a max hold. So I'm retaining the maximum value for the sweep as it goes across. And the spectrum analyzer is fast enough to be able to see these pulses come by. But you can see those little juts of yellow that come up occasionally. Those are smart meters uh, throughout the neighborhood. And they're a one watt transmitter. So uh, it's not too hard to see them. Uh, but as you can see, the level of the signal is not exceeding about minus 54 dBm, which is reasonably low. Uh, it's as expected for a one watt transmitter. We also have in California the uh, PG&E meters, which are down here in the uh, 450 to 470 band, and those are the meters that are made by uh, Aclara. And as you can see, we're now sweeping from 440 to 460. And within this band, there are also a lot of other things. For example, there's police radio. Uh, San Jose Police Department is transmitting right around in this area. But occasionally you will see uh, small pops from the PG&E uh, gas meters as well in this band. If we look at the entire band ranging over from 440 to uh, up to around the 930 range, actually 400 to 950, uh, you can see that there's there's quite a bit going on in there. One of the markers that I've placed here is marker number 5, which is at 603 megahertz, and that is actually a TV transmitter. Uh, it's channel 36 here in the San Francisco Bay Area. And you can see that there are a couple of uh, TV transmitters. And then over here, uh, you can see the uh, 800 band that is cellular, so these are the cellular bands as well. And the marker 3 and 4 here, dancing around on the yellow trace, and the marker 1 and 2, that indicates the smart grid band. Uh, this would be the electric smart grid, and this would be the gas smart grid right there. Uh, and you can see over time that occasionally these uh, pulses ramp up, but really the amount of power that's coming in uh, over the uh, over the airwaves is much stronger for the TV channels than it is for any of the business band, police, uh, some amateur radio happening down in here. You'll also see 433 megahertz signals which are coming in from wireless thermometers, um, wireless sensors, security uh, sensors uh, like ga glass break front sensors or door open sensors all operate in that uh, 433 ISM band and there's quite a bit of activity going on here in cellular uh, occasionally I see strong spikes in there probably because of my wife's phone which is downstairs uh, from me and so if uh, her phone is checking in checking email or something then that's gonna show up here uh, as a signal but what we're actually looking at here is the transmitter, the uh, LTE or CDMA transmitters, which are probably a few miles away from here. I guess the point that I'm trying to make here is, is that the strength of the RF energy is most obvious in the TV bands, and that's to be expected given that the TV transmitters are putting out, uh, you know, tens or if not hundreds of thousands of watts of power, so even though they're a ways away from me, they are still putting out a very, very strong signal. I thought it would be interesting to show you another view, which is the wideband. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at the entire RF band, uh, ranging from uh, almost DC 
all the way up to one gigahertz. And again, you can see there's quite a bit of uh, elect there's quite a bit of RF energy. Uh, here is the FM broadcast band. I can put a marker on that and show you the frequency there. You know, 101 megahertz. That's to be expected. There's quite a bit of RF energy here in this 200 band, this uh, 230 band, and I'm still trying to sort out what that is. I don't quite know. I I believe that it may actually be uh, leakage from a cable TV system, but it seems very, uh, it's impulsive, it's moving quickly, and uh, that doesn't really look to me like a cable TV signal, so I'm still trying to determine what's going on there. Uh, you can also see some of the systems there. There are our markers, uh, 423 megahertz. These are the uh, wireless thermometers. There's the gas smart grid band. We look at the marker there. That's 605, again, TV, television. That is cellular. Right about, well, that's cellular right about there. And then there are some uh, other systems here in the high 800s, and uh, those are the uh, those are the uh, CDMA uh, and TDMA signals from uh, from Verizon and AT&T. So the point that I'm making with this video and what I'm trying to show you, there's been a lot of folks real worried about smart grid and what it's going to do to them and is it dangerous? Is it, I put a smart grid meter on the side of my house. Is it going to affect me? Is it going to affect my health, the health of my family? And as you can see, there's an awful lot of RF energy out there, which is coming from various sources. And you really have to go looking for those smart grid signals. I mean, they're not obvious. They're not just running right off to the top of the screen. You're not seeing these big pulses there. And they're very fast, they're very low power, so they're not going to cause any health problems. I can guarantee you there's no issues there. You have a lot more to worry about from cellular, uh, TV transmitters, and those have been around for years, and if those haven't been causing you problems, then it's very, very unlikely that a smart grid meter operating at half a watt or one watt with very, very short pulses is going to do anything to you. So I thought I would share this. Um, if you have any questions, put them below in the comments. Thanks for your time.